Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we're going to be doing a full review of all seven shades of the new Catrice Shine Balm Liquid Lipsticks. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be an overview of all seven shades that Catrice has released in the new Shine Balm liquid lipstick. So I already told you about these when I did my first impression, when the collection was first launched in January. However, I did not have all the shades yet. I think I had four out of seven. And in the meantime, I have been tracking down the remainder three, which means we can do a full on lip swatch video today. And I will be inserting some pictures of all of the swatches that I have as well, so that you can see how these shades compare. In case you're new here and you've never seen one of my videos, then hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, and this greatly influences my makeup preferences. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I love eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing by clicking, clicking the button down below. So we have seven new shades of these Shine Balm liquid lipsticks. Catrice has done a Shine Balm line in the past, and this seems to be like a liquefied formula. However, I feel that this is like the Catrice dupe of the Maybelline Vinyl Inks. That's how they're promoted. It says to shake them and then it should sh uh, dry down to a high glossy finish. Because it took me a while to gather all of the shades, I have been testing these out on the down low. So I have whipped some of these on throughout my work weeks to see how they wore and whether I like the formula. And formula wise, this is not my favorite. It feels quite heavy on the lips, but they're super pigmented. They definitely have that glossy shine and they have really good lasting power. They don't have the weird dry down that you may remember from some lipstick, liquid lipsticks having. So I think that's a plus as well, but that does affect the wear time. So if you were looking or hoping that these would be like budge proof 12 hour lipsticks, that's not what these are but they do have a really pretty finish. I just don't find them this most comfortable to wear. And I find that as I'm eating and drinking, because of that heavier texture, I get a lot of staining on all of my cups and all of my like cutlery. And it tends to slide around quite a bit when I am consuming food. And since I'm a teacher in my day-to-day -day life and I talk all day long, I don't like lipstick formulas that I need to babysit because they could like this can slide around and get all over your teeth. These have a tendency to really get caught in the corners of my mouth and then sort of like bleed into this horizontal line. I get that with any sort of lipstick formula that is a touch too heavy or that I apply too thickly. And with these, I feel I have it without fail. So that's why I like them. I think it's a good one from Catrice to do this at a more budget proof price point. Um, and I definitely will keep one or two, two of these around because there are some shades here that I think are really pretty. Um, but I don't think these are going to be like lasting, like, like these are not going to stand the test of time in my personal makeup collection. But if you're interested in getting some of these, then maybe putting these on my lips can be helpful for you to know what these shades actually look like on someone with pretty pale skin with a more cool toned undertone and to just see how these all wear. So let me throw these on and we're gonna get started with the first one and this is 010 French Silk. And here we have what 010 French Silk looks like on my lips. I don't think this is super offensive, but, but this is not the kind of nude that I normally go for. Judging by the packaging, I thought it was gonna be lighter, but it's definitely also a little bit more warm toned for me. I'm wearing a very neutral sweater today. I'm wearing a very neutral makeup look otherwise, so we can really see all of these colors here. And I like this a lot better than I had expected, but this is not my favorite. Like these are just not the kind of shades I go for. I would have to wear this with a lip liner that I can possibly make it work. These don't really have a noticeable scent, uh, as in like overly perfumey, but this one smells a bit plasticky, you could say, which is also not my favorite. So I haven't noticed that with the ones that I have already been wearing and I've been testing out for you to test out the formula. But yeah, this is a pretty shade. It is a lot more flattering than I had expected. 
and it's just a pretty nude if that's what you're looking for. Next up is 020, and this is the shade Good Taste. So here is what 020 Good Taste looks like on me, and it's a mauve tone pink, so we knew we we're gonna love this. I have been wearing this one the most in recent days, and I got some compliments because I wore it in a recent video, and people were asking me what it was that I was wearing, and it was this one, um, or maybe one of the other pinky shades that are in this line. So yeah, this is the one that I've been wearing most. It goes with my complexion best. It's a nude, but it's not like super nude. It's not too light. It's not too beige. So if you were looking for a cooler toned, mauve tone shade that can be really flattering if you have quite a lot of purple on your lips, then I think 020 Good Taste can be a nice one. The thing that bugs me about the packaging is that it comes with a sticker, and you need to really carefully line up the packaging every time so that the sticker lines up. So every single time, it just, it just bugs me. Like you can get it to work, but it takes a little while for that to happen. And these are best applied like the Maybelline ones where you don't really like, you can transfer this formula to your top lip. Like you can press your lips together, but then I like to reapply a little bit on my bottom lip and then just let it dry without having my lips touch each other for the best wear time and the prettiest finish. So this is again one where you do need to do a little bit of thinking ahead in order to get the best result. But if you do that, I feel they last a good four to five hours, which is lovely. Moving on to shade 030, Sweet Talker. And this is the one that took me longest to hunt down. I had to go and pick this one up when I was in Germany. Um, and it's like a peachy nude. So here is what the shade Sweet Talker looks like. And again, on my lips, this isn't horrible. I usually don't look that great in peach lipsticks, but this one is pretty nice because it has more of that pinky vibe going on. So it seems like these lipsticks have a little bit of that quality that I like so much about a lot of my Lisa Eldridge ones, where it may look like it's going to be like super peach, but because it has that pink, if you have that cooler undertone, the pink is going to shine through a little bit more. Um, and it just seems to have a really nice blend of shades, which is very rare to find at the drugstore price point. Another thing I really appreciate about these is the doe flute applicator. It is incredibly precise, which especially with some of the deeper tones that are coming up, I'm going to appreciate. I just know it. But yeah, you can be very precise and really draw it if you use like the side of the doe foot. So you can use like the paddle side to fill in your lips and then use the smaller side to draw the edge of your lips, which makes these really, really easy to use indeed. Um, this one, again, shade-wise, I like it quite a lot on myself. I had not expected it. Um, so far, my favorite is still 020. That is one that I think I will definitely be putting into my lipstick collection. We have what looks like to be an orange-toned red in the tube. This is 040, about last night. Let's see how this one goes. And this is what that red looks like. I think it looks really, really stunning. But I think here you can also see what happens because of that thicker formula that I was mentioning at the start of the video, not loving as much. It just kind of sits on your lips. And especially if it's not a nude, if it shades like this, I feel you can really sort of like, like it really looks like a layer is sitting on your lips. And it just looks a little bit thick and therefore a little bit fake and artificial, which of course with a red, do we really mind? I don't think so, but I definitely think that this lipstick is a contender to be put on towards the end of the video because I need to go to a concert tonight, so I will be able to test this out and wear it for like over six hours today because it's roughly five o'clock as I'm filming this on my day off and I won't be home until past midnight tonight. So I thought I could throw in a wear test as well and I think because I'm planning on wearing this sweater out, um, and just a pair of jeans and like throw on a red lip and you've got a look. So I think I might want to keep this one off to the side and show that one to you in a wear test if I don't forget to film it as I get home because I may just be super tired. 050 is feeling berry special, which seems to be a berry shade according to the packaging. So let's put it on. So here's what shade 050 looks like, which I think is very pretty. 
I just don't find it that berry leaning. It's more like a rosy pink <laughs> rather than a full on berry. I had expected this to pull darker on me um, and perhaps have a bit more purple judging by the name and the packaging. It's close. It's a pretty good representation of what the color actually looks like, but on me, it perhaps has a little bit more warmth than I would like to go for. I think this is the kind of shade that's going to look stunning if you have a deeper complexion. And this is 060 Pinky Promise, which in the packaging looks like a really cool tone pink, but I already wore this once and I feel it's not as light. It's going to pull a lot darker, if I remember correctly. So here is what Pinky Promise looks like, and I feel that this is the one that look, looks the least like the packaging, um, because this definitely pulls darker than the tube does. It's very flattering on me, though. If you have a cooler toned undertone, and you're looking for a good pink lipstick, this can be a nice one. It's got a lot of blue running through it, but it doesn't have a lot of white. So wear a lot of these like very bright, Barbie, pink-esque kind of shades can sometimes look a little bit weird, because they're just simply too light for most people. This actually has a really nice blend that it can work on a lot of different skin tones, I feel. This does have a bit of a hint of lavender blue to, almost, to it, almost, that I think is going to make this look especially good on people with cool undertone, but you don't have to be fair-skinned in order for this to work on you. I think this can work on people with fair skin to medium skin to even deeper skin tones. And I actually think um, that maybe if you were to blend these two together, because it is that kind of lipstick where I do feel you could like use one of them as a liner and then fill in your lips with another color. And I do think the berry shade and this one can complement each other a little bit better. If, for instance, this is too cool toned for you, or if you want that ombre moment, then I think this can be a really nice combination for sure. But by itself, this is really pretty on. It is my second favorite, but I think my top favorite is still 020 for now because it's just it just has that blend of warm and cool. So I know it's gonna work for uh, me for a lot of different looks, whereas this, I can really only p pull off if I'm wearing barely anything else on my face and I would probably have to wear my hair down for this as well, just to have a little bit more something there to warm up my complexion. But this is very, very pretty on. It's just a t touch darker than you might expect from just looking at it in the tube. And 070 would be the shade Hottie, which looks like it's going to be a chocolate brown. And that's what 070 Hottie looks like on me. It's pretty, but this does the thing that I find a lot of uh, lipsticks do if they are a little bit too warm toned. I tend to get a red ring around my mouth when that happens to me and this is kind of giving me the red ring. That could also be because I have been taking off these lipsticks and then putting on the next one straight away. So my lip line is an absolute mess by now, but yeah, this is pretty. I can definitely get away with it. Again, not my personal favorite. I'm just not a huge fan of brown lipstick on myself. Um, and for brown lipstick to work on me, it has to be a lot more cooler toned. It, it's giving Velvet Teddy World kind of vibes to me. And I decluttered both those lipstick shades because they just, they just weren't quite right for me. Something like Max Verve, much better. This is a little bit too orange leaning for it to be truly pretty on me. Goes really great with my eye color, but it doesn't really go great with my skin tone, I feel. So let me put the red back on so I can start filming the segment of this video that's going to be a bit of a wear time test so you can see the full on effect even after hours of wear. Uh, if I don't forget to update you by the time I get home, I could be really tired and just forget because I want to take off my makeup, but fingers crossed I don't. Um, and then I'll do the outro to the video. All right, so that's the red one reapplied so I can put in a bit of a wear test. It is roughly 5.20 in the afternoon. I shouldn't be back home until 1 a.m. ish. So this should be on for about six hours or so. So we can see how much of this is left. I still need to have dinner. I'm probably going to have a couple of drinks as I'm at the concert tonight. So we can definitely see how well this wears. Right, it's past 1 a.m. It's like, 1 15 in the morning. Um, I just got home. The lipstick is still lipsticking.
I hadn't worn this bold a color yet of the Shine Bombs, and I have to say I'm very happy how this held up. Uh, as I mentioned, I put this on around 5 o'clock. It's six hours later and it still looks fine. The best perk of this lipstick is that it can smush it back together when it wears down. You know how with some liquid lipsticks, once it wears down in the middle, you get this bare patch. And with this, you can just press your lips back together and we'll be fine. I had pasta, I had some snacks, I had some drinks, and this is still looking pretty okay. I mean, we can we can see the wear, it's, but the, the color is still there, which for this price point at the drugstore, I think is a really good bet. So yes, these are long lasting as well. So that's the quick checking I wanna do. I need to take off this makeup and head to bed. And that's the review for this Catrice Shine Balm Lipstick Formula. It's like a more affordable version of the Maybelline Vinyl Inks, as I have already been saying uh, at the start of the video. I do feel that these are a little bit easier to work with in terms of how they apply. You just get a little bit more time to play with these. They don't dry down as quickly. And I find the doe foot a little bit easier to work with. These have nice lasting power for sure, I feel, but they don't last as long as the Maybellines. For some of the shades, I feel they sit on the lips a little bit too much. And um, I think that all of the shades are flattering on me. I could wear all seven of these and be exactly happy. So I hope this video was helpful for you to be as informative as I could be to help you figure out whether you might, might want to purchase any of these. Let me know in a comment down below what you're planning to do. I would love to know. In the meantime, please stay tuned on this channel because I have more Essence and Catrice lipstick and eyeshadow palette reviews coming your way. Over on the blog, I'm currently reviewing a lot of the products as well in terms of like blushes and highlighters. And then uh, if you want to hear my sort of like wrapped up, wrapped up thoughts on a lot of these products, you're going to have to stay tuned because whenever I have a bunch of new Essence and Catrice products in, I like to do like a little roundup video once I've had enough chance to try all of them, which is probably going to be like April or May. So thank you so very much for joining me here today. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos on this channel four times a week, once a week over on my second channel, and I have a blog where I post daily content as well. So I hope to see you on one of those spaces in the meantime. For now, take care, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye!